damn things. So how does somebody like me make conscious contact with God? I do it in four through nine, and I keep it going in step 10. And if I do that, what I get is a lot out of prayer and meditation. Now, what is prayer? Prayer is me talking to God. That's all prayer is. Meditation is nothing more than me listening to what's coming back. That little voice that tells me right from wrong. Now, an alcoholic like me, before I come in here, if you show me an alcoholic, I will show you somebody that prays their ass off. They got to try to get themselves out of situations. <laughs> but most of y'all have never used prayer and meditation together. What you've been using is prayer and medication. That's what you've been using. Now, prayer is talking. Meditation is listening. Now, God gave me one mouth and two ears. There's a reason why. He wants me to do more listening than talking. Now, how many of y'all, before you come in here, all you do is talk to God. You make deals with him. I'll do this if you do that. I'll get me out of this and I'll never do that. But how many of y'all have ever used prayer and meditation to seek and do God's will. <laughs> this many of y'all. Now, the way that you pray, whatever you've been doing, don't do it anymore. Why do you think I say that? Say that again? No, it ain't working. If it was, your ass wouldn't be sitting in here. There's nothing wrong with the way you do it. It just don't work. Now, if prayer is me talking to God and meditation is me listening, it's like a phone. A phone has a talking piece and a phone has a listening piece. Now, if you are running a business and you sitting at the front desk and you got a phone, but it only has the talking piece to the phone. And the phone rang and you answered it. Could you answer it? Yeah, because you got the talking piece, but after that, could you conduct any business? Because you only got one piece to the damn phone. Now, what would happen to your business eventually? It would go out of business. Now, let's say you didn't have the talking piece, you just had the listening piece. Could you conduct much good business? And what would happen to your business? Go bankrupt. Now, we trying to go back in business, the business of living again. So you got to get both pieces to the phone going, the talking piece and the listening piece. And if you get them both going, you can conduct some pretty good business. And the most important business I'm going to conduct in a day is with God. Now, prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening. Now, when I listen, I don't hear a voice come out the sky that says, hey, Kevin. You need to do this, this, and this. And if you hear that, we need to get you to another facility. What we're talking about, how many of y'all hear this little voice every time you get ready to do something wrong and you know it's wrong and it says, hey, dumbass, don't do that. Look, I promise you, if you get ready to do something and you know it's wrong, you're going to hear that little voice. I'll give you an example. If you went to rob a bank and they had three police cars in the parking lot, I promise you, you're going to hear a little voice say, hey, dumbass, you better not do that. 
Now, how many of y'all, every time you hear that voice say, hey, you better not do that, you block it out. And you do what you want to do. And when you do what you want to do, and it's usually not the right thing, do you start to face consequences sooner or later? And when the consequences start hitting, does that voice come back a little louder a second time and say, hey, hey, I told you not to do that. Now, alcoholics like me, I got three things. I got what's right, what's wrong, and in the middle, what the hell I want to do. And what I want to do usually wins out. Now, normal people, they got two things. They got what's right, what's wrong, and most of them normally do what's right. Now, if I can get what I want to do out the way, right and wrong isn't a biggie for me anymore. Now, how many of y'all are constantly doing what you want to do? when you want to do it and how you want to do it. And where that's gotten you is a front row seat at Woodland. That's what it's gotten you. Now, four through nine. Who can tell me what that actually does? It tapped me into a power. Because when four through nine is applied in Kevin's life, it removes self. And if self's out the way, I tap right into that power. Now, once I tap into it, I improve on it with prayer and meditation. Y'all open y'all's big books to page 84. I tell you what, I want y'all to go to 85, the second to last paragraph on that page. What, what, are, you, what are you doing, bro? What are you leaving? Yeah, it might be sooner than that. What's wrong with you? I want everybody following along on page 85. The last paragraph down. Now, in this part of the book, they're still talking on step 10. It says, much has already been said. Look up here. Much has already been said. See, the first 10 steps, much has already been said. Now, this is what they've been trying to get you to put yourself in a position to do. Receive strength, inspiration, and direction from him who has all knowledge and power. Now, the first 10 steps, if I take them, and I continue to take 10, I put myself in a position to do what? Receive. Receive what? God's will. Look, how many of y'all will say or think, well, I don't know what God's will is for me. I know what God's will is for me. It is for me to do the next thing right. That's God's will. That's all he wants. Now, how many of y'all have a hell of a problem doing the next thing right? What gets in your way every time? Self. So I have to continually practice step 10 to keep self what? Out the damn way. It says if you've carefully followed directions, that's the first 10 steps, it would be a fucking small miracle. Because most of y'all have a hell of a problem following directions. Now, in here, okay, in here. If you don't follow the directions in here, 
What's the worst thing that can happen to you? Huh? You got a gun. Now, out there, they call them laws. Now, if you can't follow simple little bitty directions in here, what makes you think you're going to be able to follow the laws out there? And out there, if you break them, see, they don't ask you to leave. They ask you to come stay. <laughs> but I want you to think about that. Simple little bitty directions. How many of y'all can't fucking follow them? Now, the rules in here. Dude, how many of y'all think some of them are just dumb as shit? The rules in here? Yeah. Yeah, they dumb as shit, ain't they? Yeah. You know who made them up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the reasons we got some dumb little rules is to see if you can follow them. Now, if you can't follow little bitty things and do little bitty things right, what makes you think you're going to be able to do the big things right when you get out of here? If you can start doing little bitty things right, the chances of you doing the bigger things right when you get out of here go up by leaps and bounds. But if you can't do little bitty shit right, there ain't no way you got a chance in hell of doing the big things right. Now, being on time, being five minutes early, making your bed, blah, 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 blah. Some of them are what? Dumb rules. And if you can follow them, you well on your way. Back in the book. If you've carefully followed directions, you have begun to sense the flow of his spirit into you. To some extent, you have become God conscious. You have begun to develop this vital sixth sense. Now, they just told you this is a vital sixth sense. It's called God consciousness. Now, most people are born with five senses. Sight, taste, hearing, touch, and smell. Now, these five senses, most people go through life getting information from these five senses and feeding this computer with that information. Now, these five senses, are they always right? Who says yes? Yeah? Who says not? Who knows that? Look, how many of y'all have ever seen a girl four or five blocks down the road <laughs> and you go, Ooh, oh, she cute. And the, the, the closer she gets, the uglier she becomes. So is your sight always right? If I blindfolded some of y'all, y'all would probably be better off. If I blindfolded you and I put 20 things in front of you to taste, could you get 20 out of 20 every time? So, is your taste always right? If I blindfolded you and I put 40 things in front of you and all you could do was touch them, would you be able to get 40 out of 40? Sober, I said sober, have you thought you heard something when you really did it? Now, those five senses, are they always correct? No. And how many of y'all, you gather information from just these five senses, which are not always? Right. So you feed this thing some bad information. So you've been making some bad decisions. Now, 
What you basically have up here is about a billion dollar computer. Now, I'm an old crackhead. And I don't know how to hook computers up, but I sure as hell know how to unhook them. <laughs> now, a computer. Who knows something about computers in here? The most important part of the computer is what? The brain, right? Yes. Now that brain, that computer, is only as good as the information that is fed. Would you agree or disagree? Now, how many of y'all have a billion dollar computer up here and you feeding it some damn rare, very limited information? Now, they tell you there's a vital sixth sense. If you can get this one going with these, you can feed this thing some pretty good damn information. And you can start to make some pretty good decisions. Now, that little voice that tells me right from wrong, how many of y'all, when you get ready to do something wrong and you know it's wrong, you hear that little voice say, Hey, dumbass, don't do that. Do you hear that? Huh? Do you? Do you? What about you, Red? All the time. You? What about you? Now, what do you call that voice? Okay, he said it's conscience, and most people do. I'll prove to you it's not your conscience. I'll prove it to you. Every time you hear that little voice say, hey, hey man, don't do that, has it always been right? I fucking know so. <laughs> so that in itself proves there's no way that's your conscience. Because there's only one entity in this universe that's always right 100% of the time. And that's the fundamental idea of God. Now, when you block that first voice out and do what you want, that's your conscience. Uh, yeah. Now, I, I know <laughs> why the fuck are you sitting there. <laughs> now, how many of y'all, you can call it whatever you want, <laughs> but that first voice that tells you right from wrong, that's always right. That is the fundamental idea, God. How many of y'all, God's been trying to direct you your whole damn life? And every time you get ready to stray from the path, he goes, hey, hey dumbass, don't do that. Now, if you could take that vital six step and start incorporating it with this, there ain't no telling what you could do. Now, how many of y'all growing up physically, you had a dream, an aspiration that you wanted to do in life? Now, don't tell me if you like four foot eight that you want to be the center for the Los Angeles Lakers when you grew up. I'm talking something real plausible. How many of y'all had a dream, an aspiration? What did you want to do? I'm a welder. Become a what? I'm a welder. Is that what you wanted to become? Yes. Not, not fucking an overhead welder, huh? <laughs> Everything. I'm a pipe welder. Yeah. A successful one? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. Now, 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 I'm a little slow, as you can tell. But I think y'all have to pass drug tests, don't y'all? Oh. Have you ever failed one for employment as a pipe fitter or a welder? Yeah. That's all I'm here. Yeah. Now, again, I'm a little slow, but that's not very successful in my book. Yours? Now, what do you want to do? Who else had a dream? What did you want that? Who else? What did you want that? Veterinary. What did you want that? What did you want that? 
Now, let's just say for shits and giggles, every time you heard that voice say, hey, hey man, don't do that. If you were to listen to it every time, what are the chances you would be a veterinarian right now? Working as a successful pipe fitter welder and all your wells would pass. Uh, history buff. See, what'd you say? A good one. Huh? That can run like five piece crown and run it one time the first fucking time. Now, guess who else wanted you to be a veterinarian? God, that's who put that idea in your head. See, and that's why every time you get ready to stray from the path, he says, hey, dumbass, don't do that. And how many of y'all won't listen to him anytime, no time? But yet when shit is the fan, how many of y'all blame God for the predicament you in? And he's going, Look, I'm trying to direct you. You just won't. Listen. Now, if I can get self out the way, how do I do that? Initially, and I keep it out the way with, now, if I can keep self out the way, guess what I hear loud and clear? Many of you guys ever hooked up a stereo in a car and you didn't get it just right and it sounded like shit. It was distorted a little bit. Did you go, fuck, let me crank that shit up? Or did you go, oh man, fuck, that sounded like crap? And you turned it down. Well, when you got it hooked up right and it was crystal clear, did you crank it up? Now, before I came into this program, I had some wires crossed. <laughs> and this sounded very distorted to me. And I didn't want to listen to it. So I turned it. But see, I got my wires corrected. And I keep them corrected. And that sounds loud and. So guess what I want to do? Look, you ain't getting away from this. You've been hearing it all your life. You just won't listen to it. Now, again, if I can get those five senses going again with this one, people like me can make some pretty good damn decisions. All right, back in the book. Step 11 suggests prayer and meditation. Prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening. We shouldn't be shy on this matter of prayer. Better men than we are using it constantly. It works if you have the proper attitude and you work at it. Now, how does somebody like me get the proper attitude? Then I'll work on it. Look, I'm telling you right now, if you just try to start praying and meditating, it won't work. Because guess what's still in your way? Self. Look, what are, what are the examples I use? How many of y'all, when you ever got good and loaded the first or second or third time, this is what you did. You went, woohoo! Shit, I done found something here. And what'd you want? And, and, and you wanted to turn all your friends on to the shit because you had found something. Now, how many of y'all ever got some bunk ass done? Did you go, man, give me some more of that shit? Hell no. See, if you don't 
get the good shit, say, and keep getting the good shit, you ain't going to want more. But somebody like me who gets the good shit, they want more. And, and they want to turn everybody on to it. See, one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this, as you can tell, and I don't put up with no bullshit, as you can well tell, is because I know where you're heading if you don't do something. And most of y'all won't fare too well where you're heading. You will be washing underwear and socks. <laughs> yeah, I laugh at that shit. And most of y'all go, not me. That's the one motherfucker that will be doing it, is the one that says they won't be. And the whole time you in there, you're going to go, golly, I wish I'd have listened to that asshole. I really wish I would have listened to what he said. And that little voice is going to be coming at you steadily going, dumbass, you dumbass. You had the opportunity and you blew it. Now, they're going to give me three suggestions on how anybody can take these three suggestions, apply them, and guess what would happen to their prayer meditation life? It would improve. Now, this is a true story. I had a Catholic priest as a client. He comes in and I'm thinking to myself, now what in the shit am I going to tell this dude about prayer and meditation? He actually had a master's. And guess what it was in? Prayer and. <laughs> and you know that little voice, it kept coming to me, said, shit, hit him with what you hit anybody else with. And that's what I did. Exactly what you fixing to get, he got. You know, he's sober today. And he's told me before, you know, I never dreamed that somebody like you could help me with prayer and meditation. I said, I didn't. God did. Well, wherever you're at, whether you think you're like, up here with prayer and meditation or way down here, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. What matters is you start and you start like very quick. Now, they're going to give me three simple suggestions. They're going to tell me what to do when I go to bed. They're going to tell me what to do when I wake up. And they're going to tell me what to do as I go through the day. So they're going to cover everything. They don't leave us alcoholics, no loopholes. Now, however you've been praying, don't do it anymore. Is it wrong? No, I don't think so. It's just not. Now, how many of y'all do this yet? When you pray, you ask God for everything under the sun. <clears throat> let you hit the lottery, get the Russians out of Ethiopia, let the world be this. Let, and then you go, and thy father, if I've forgotten anything, give me that shit too. You got a long list of shit. Now, Step 11 tells me what to pray for. This is what it tells me. I pray only, only for the knowledge of his will. Now, I know what God's will is for me. That's to do the next thing. This is where I run into trouble. The power to carry that out. 
I know right from wrong, just like you do. You know right from wrong? You? 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 You know how I know you know right from wrong? You born with that. That's the fundamental idea of God. You're born with it. How many of y'all have ever seen a little baby? Not when you look in the mirror. A real little baby in diapers. Can't walk, can't talk, and they start crawling. And they go up to a cabinet, and they try to get in it, and their mama goes, And that little baby does like most of y'all and goes, away. Now, if you watch that little baby, when mama walks off, that little baby will look back and make sure mama ain't watching no more and try it again. You know why that baby looks back to see if mama's watching or not? It already knows right from wrong. You born with that. That's the fundamental idea of God. How many of y'all you know right from wrong? And what keeps getting in your way every time is what you want to do. And what you want to do normally wins out over what's right and what's wrong. All right, back in the book. I want you to take of your pen, your pencil, whatever you got, a crayon. I want you to put a one on the side of the word win. And I want you to circle. This is the first suggestion they're going to give you. Put you a one on the side of the word win and circle. Now, they're going to start out with when I go to bed at night. Now, why do you think they start out with when I go to bed. Because look, how many of y'all have ever went to bed mad at the world? And when you woke up, what were you? How many of y'all ever went to bed obsessing and thinking about drugs and alcohol? When you woke up, what were you thinking of? So if I go to bed right, I wake up right. So it's real important for me to go to bed right. Now, how many of y'all do this shit? All through the day, you run on self. You make a mess out of shit. And right before you go to bed, you go, thy father forgives thy for what thy has done, and then jump your ass in bed. That ain't what we're talking about. Now, they're going to give me some real precise directions. So the first suggestion is when I retire at night. All right, here we go. When we retire at night, we constructively review our day, not destructively, constructively. Was I resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Question mark. They didn't want me to ask myself that. What step does that sound like to you? Say that again. Four. So what am I repracticing again? Step four. Do I owe an apology? Eight and nine. Have I kept something to myself which should be discussed with another person? At once. Was I kind and loving toward all? Now, what I just did, again, is four through. If you were listening yesterday, which I know y'all all were, I told you four through nine was the meat of this program. And I'm going to continually practice four through nine. We just call it step 10 now. Step 10 and 11. This is where they sort of tie in together. Right here. And I can't do one effectively without the other one. 
Now, let's keep reading. What could I have done better? Was I thinking of myself most of the time? Was I thinking what I could do for others? What I could pack into the stream of life? Now, they want you to ask yourself those questions. If you're honest with yourself, when you ask yourself those questions, what you're going to find out is you got a lot of work left yet to do. Now, listen to what it tells me. I must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, for that would diminish my usefulness to others. If I'm honest with myself, asking myself those questions, Am I going to see where I've got work to do? And they telling me, don't sweat it. How many of y'all in here worry? How many of y'all in here pray? If you're going to worry, don't pray. And if you're going to pray, don't worry. Now, if somebody is 10 stepping all day long, when they get to this part, retiring at night, do you think it's going to take a long time? No, because they took care of most of it as they went through the day. If I actually take these three suggestions and incorporate them into my life, it would take me probably six or seven minutes out of my whole 24 hour day to do it. Now, how many of y'all spend hours, Jared, working on the outside? Working out and shit. How many hours have you spent? A lot. How many of you guys spend more time in front of the fucking mirror than most women do? You spend a lot of time working on the outside and very little working on the inside and you walk around trying to judge everybody's outsides by your damn insides outside people look at you and they go My fuck anyone do bad inside your ass is dying you you fucking dying and you're too scared to tell anybody Now, listen to what it says. After making my review, after I do this, you would have to do it for it to be after. After making my review, I ask God's forgiveness. So I say a little prayer. Then it says, I inquire. I do some Listening, meditation, on what corrective measures should be taken. See those questions I ask myself? I'm going to start to hear that little voice tell me what corrective measures should be taken. Now, when somebody like me starts to do this before I go to bed, along with step 10 all through the day, guess what the fuck I can do at night? like a baby and when I wake up in the morning when my eyes pop open I go yeah, I'm up. how many of y'all when y'all wake up you're probably more tired than when you went to sleep how many y'all have problem going to sleep how many y'all got dope drinks Look, people ask me all the time, hey, I'm having those dreams. I go, that's sort of normal. You've been thinking about the shit for fucking years. And then I ask them, do you get loaded in your dreams? Huh? What? Go back to sleep. <laughs> At least you'd be sober. Look, is that normal? Yeah. For people like us, that's all you've been thinking about for years, most of your life. 
Now, do they diminish? Yes. If you're doing what we're talking about. Now, if I go to bed right, when my eyes pop open on awakening, the second suggestion, it'll actually work. So put you a two on the side of the word on awakening and circling. The next paragraph. So the first suggestion told me what to do when I go to bed. The second one's going to tell me what to do when I wake up. Now, it says on awakening. When you awake, where are you at? No, I mean, where, where are you physically every time you wake up? No, you're in your bed. Every fucking time you wake up, that's where you're at. See, it tells you on awakening. It don't say. Look, it doesn't say this unless I have a misprint. You got this. Does it say after I shit, shower, have coffee, beignets, smoke five cigarettes, and drink 22 Red Bulls? <laughs> it don't say that. If I go to bed right, why right when my eyes pop open, I'm still in God's will. And this is when I got to do it. Not after I done did everything under the sun and got back in the cell. It won't work yet. So I go to bed in God's will, and right when my eyes pop open, I'm still in bed. That's when I do it. Now, this is what I did. It says, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. Now, God gives me enough bread, enough of his strength for one day. And if I overload that bread or that strength with yesterday's problem or next week's problem, the bread that he gave me for the day is not going to be sufficient. How many of y'all, you're either living in yesterday or tomorrow? And what God actually gave you today, you piss on. See, the Lord's Prayer. The one y'all say before every meal that you just go, oh, blah, 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 let's eat. If you actually listen to the damn thing, it says, give us this day our daily bread. That's strength. That's his power. And he gives me enough for one day. It doesn't say, give me this week your weekly bread. It don't say that. Again, how many of y'all get caught up in yesterday or tomorrow? And you miss the most precious thing you got. So it says, I think about the 24 hours ahead. I consider my plans for the day. Before I begin, I ask God. So I say a little prayer. And this is what I ask. God to direct my thinking, especially asking it be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, or self-seeking motives. Under these conditions, what conditions? God directed my thinking. Under those conditions, it says I can employ my mental faculty with assurance. Now, where does the main problem for the alcoholic center? In the mind. And they're telling me right here, at this point, I'm starting to employ this with assurance. After all, God gave us brains to use. My thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when my thinking is clear of wrong motives. How many of y'all, all, all y'all want to try to think about is, how am I going to fucking get over people today? And that's so ingrained in you. Even when you don't have to be dishonest, your ass is. How many of y'all in here? Y'all's motives are so wrapped up in self 
and they're so dishonest and inconsiderate, you can't see the truth from the falsehood. You know, I look back on how I used to think and the shit I used to do, and I go, oh, God, I can't believe I thought that shit was okay. I can't believe I thought that was okay. I know why God dropped the shit on me he dropped on me. After the way I treated his other children, he actually took it light on me. Now, suggestion one told me what to do when I go to bed. Suggestion two told me what to do on awakening. The third suggestion in thinking, put you a three there, they're going to tell me what to do as I go through the day. Now, night, morning, through the day, they leave nothing out. No loopholes for you to jump through. All right, the third suggestion, it says in thinking about our day, we may face indecision. Now, how many of y'all in here, when y'all are facing indecision and you really don't know what to do, you're going to do something, right, wrong, or indifferent. You're like a fucking bull in a china closet. And after you make a mess out of shit and consequences start hitting, that's when you say, God, please help me. Now, this would be a novel idea for y'all. When I'm facing indecision, I do absolutely nothing. And I go, hey, bro, I need, I need a little help here. And God works through people. To tell me, <clears throat> he has, to tell me what to do. Now, when I'm facing indecision, I don't really know which course to take. I may call my sponsor. That's a novel idea, huh? But you'd have to have one to call some bitch. And I would run it by him. And I go, man, what you think about that? And I'll listen to what he said. I might call one of my buddies up out there at Alpha who are very spiritually minded and say, hey, what you think about this? And I'll listen to what they say. Now, if two or three or four people are telling me the same thing, that's God telling me, hey, dumbass, I just told you what to do. How many of y'all have had some well-intentioned people have put in your life and they telling you the same thing and you won't listen to them. Now, I'm not telling you if two or three or four of your crackhead friends say, let's go smoke some crack. That's God telling you what to do. I did say well-intentioned, spiritually minded people. How many well-intentioned, spiritually minded people have been put in your life before? Have they tried to guide you and you won't? Oh, listen. How many? How many? How many? How many good people been put in your life? Yeah. Trying to guide you, huh? And you won't? You won't listen? And God's saying, well, dude, what, what else you want me to do? I'm trying to guide you. You just won't. So what he does he goes, well, look, I think I've got to really wake my boy up. So he'll drop some shit on you. Ajax won't take off. Trying to wake you up and bring you back home. Now, how many of y'all have been getting consequence after consequence after consequence dropped on your ass? That's God telling you. Hey, bro. You can keep trying to do it your way, and the consequences are going to get worse. So we'll see who lasts longer, me or you. <laughs> and I promise you, it won't be you. Hurry up. Back in the book. 
It says, I may not be able to determine which course to take. Here I ask God. So I say what? A prayer. And this is what I ask. Inspiration and intuitive thought or a decision. Now, when somebody puts something in God's hand, this is how you know. Do you know how do you know how to tell if you actually put something in God's hand? How? Stop thinking about it, stop worrying about it. It says I relax and take it easy. That's how I know I put something in God's hand. How many of y'all? You say you put something in God's hands, but yet every waking moment, that's all you think about and worry about. When somebody does that, God will step back and he'll go, okay, the floor is yours. Because see, God's got about 500,000 answers to any problem I could possibly have. He's just waiting for me to quit struggling with it and get some help from him. So again, how do I know I put something in God's hand? I don't fret about it. I don't worry about it no more. Now, in the beginning, is it hard to put something in God's hand? Yeah. I'm so used to running on self-will. It's like foreign to me to put something in God's hand. But the more I do it, the easier it gets. And what they tell me, it actually becomes a working part of the mind. Back in the book. I relax and take it easy. I don't struggle. I'm often surprised. And in the beginning, your ass will be shocked how the right answers come after you've tried this far a while. What used to be the hunch or the occasional inspiration. You know when you're actually sitting in that jail cell and you have that hunch or occasional inspiration like, God, please get me out of this fucking hell hole. That's a hunch or occasional inspiration. Listen to what it says. It says those gradually become a working part of the mind. Now, let's talk about the three suggestions, okay? How many of y'all were studying this and were reading this and y'all were going, man, I ain't got time for all this shit. <laughs> I can remember sitting where y'all sitting and they're going over this with me and I'm going, God damn, if I do all that, I ain't gonna have time for me. That's how selfish I was. Now, again, if you take those three suggestions and you actually timed yourself, it would take you two, three, four, five, eight minutes out the whole day to do. And again, how many of y'all spend more time prepping the outside than you do the inside? You'll spend hours working out, combing your hair, doing all that shit, dressing and all that. But on the inside, you take no time, none. Now, step 10. Tells me to continue. Continue what? Four through nine. And once I do that, it tells me to take prayer and meditation and improve the conscious contact I made in 10. Now, people who are continually taking their own inventory, guess what they realize about themselves? Huh? They screwed up damn people. <laughs> this is what I know about me. I am sick as hell. And the ones of us that continue to take inventory, we know we got a lot of work yet to do. So we don't stop. We don't quit. We continue. Now, people who quit taking their inventory, the finger starts going like this. Look, I start taking everybody else's inventory. Now, how many of y'all are excellent 
and spotting shit out at other people. Your ass is a variety. You are great at that. So you don't really need any practice doing that. Now, if you could get as good taking your inventory as you are taking everybody else, you would be what we consider an AA guru. Now, just a little note for y'all. When you talk about people and you gossip about people, you know who you really telling people about? Yourself. See, when y'all come in here and I ask y'all some of them questions and y'all get all mad and shit, <laughs> y'all think I'm talking about you? I ain't talking about you. I'm telling you how I used to be. And when I see it sort of rose your feathers a little bit, I go, shit, he's just like I used to be. There's help for him. <clears throat> you got a family? What you got? I do good. Yeah. How old are they? Ten and nine. Boys or girls? A boy and a girl. What you got? Um, uh, I don't have kids. But you got a family? Yes, sir. What you got? Mom, my, my dad, my brother. Okay. You love them? Yes, sir. Sure. That's bullshit. You um, love those kids? I thought I did, but I mean. <laughs> When she kept asking me what I was going in the hospital for, I was the same to tell my daughter. So Well, let me ask you this. I if, thought about if that. me and you and the kids were in my office and I asked you in front of Miss Yellow, what would you say? Yeah, I said I love yeah. Uh, now, out your mouth you say you love your pa your, your your family? Yes, sir. What do your actions say? You do or you don't? Actually, I, I, I do. Really? Yes. Sir. Now I'm a little slow, as you can tell. I don't care if I'm in rehab or not. I know I'm not. Well, that's what you say out your mouth. <laughs> you do the same. What you put them through yesterday was crazy. Yeah, I know. I know. I, know I put them through a, a, a lot, but I don't. Now again, I'm a little slow, but explain to me how that shows you love them. You made your mama wear herself sick. Made a mistake is what I did. No mistakes are when you do something one time and you learn from it. And you don't do it anymore. Oh, that's See, you keep doing the same stuff over and over and over. No, sir. You only did dope once? No, with it and I OD yesterday and I came straight here. Yeah. Well, again, what'd you OD on? No, it don't sure. matter. Sure, it matters. You did it. What, you don't want to talk about it now? You did it. <laughs> I know. I did it. So why you don't want to talk about I, it? I did it, though. I know. Yeah. You went against everything your parents ever taught you. Every value they ever taught you, you went against. Yes, sir. You're right. I know. That's why I said that. But again, I'm a little slow now, as you can tell. But you explain to me how that shows you love your family by going against everything they taught you and instilled in you. Do you even know what love is? Yeah. What? Love is just I don't. Oh, I wouldn't trust you. Yeah. With nothing. That's you, bro. I know. That's you, bro. I know. Oh. But tell me what love is since you know. I know you don't. All right. You know, I'm watching you, and even the shit they got you on here trying to detox you, I can take you and go anywhere I want with you. So there's no telling what I could do with you if you wasn't on all that detox, man. What are you trying to say? Just what I said. I understand. <laughs> I know you don't. Uh, Believe me, I know you don't. You know, I'm I'm a very respectful young man. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you, I know. You don't, you don't have to sit here and talk to me like I'm a kid. Well, how old are you physically? I'm 21. 21? Yes, sir. Do you act like you're 21? Yes, sir. I do. Really? Yes. Uh, overdosing. Uh, 
So we can go any which way you want, back and forth all, all morning long. Love is a genuine concern for another human being. And there's no way you showing your parents genuine concern when you won't even show your own self genuine concern by sticking shit in your damn body. I never spoke with no needles, so. I, I didn't talking. say anything about a needle. I said stuck stuff, stuff in your body. You can stick it yeah. in there drinking. You can stick it in there snorting. Right. Y'all, y'all, y'all turn to page 85, 86. Hmm? Yeah, hurry up. I tell you what, we almost finished. Sit back down. I want you to pick up reading on page 86. I want you to pick up reading for me on page 87, the last paragraph. Go. We pause when agitated or doubtful. Page 87, the last paragraph. Go. As we go, they respond to the agitated or doubtful, and for the right thought or action. Now, how many of y'all, you won't ask for the right thought or action until after you make a mess out of shit? Now, when somebody like me starts to do this, Instead of making a mess out of shit and then asking for help, I step back, I pause a little bit, and I go, hey, dude, I need a little help. Now, would that be a change for most of y'all to do that? Good. Keep reading. You know, the crazy thing is most of y'all think y'all been running the show when you really hadn't been. <laughs> well, actually, God's still been in charge. He just let you think you are. <laughs> Keep going. I'm just saying to ourselves many times we say, I will be done. Now, when I start doing this on a regular basis, these are the results I'm going to start to get. Go. Uh, then it's much less painful of the tightness of fear, anger, work. All of those center up here in my mind. How many of y'all in here let people control you up here? Hmm. And if somebody controls you up here, they control your actions. Right. And you get mad at people. Because most of the people who are controlling you up here, you don't care for them or like them anyway. I can look back on how people used to control me. I was like a little puppet on a string. And people who really knew me, they would go, watch this shit. And they would bring me here and there and back around here. And after I'd act like a blithering idiot, they would go. See, I told you what he was going to do. And guess what I'm thinking the whole time? I got him right where the <laughs> fuck I want him. <laughs> and I look back on that kind of stuff and I go, God, how blind you have been. And the crazy thing is, I used to think everybody else was dumb as a box of rocks, and I was the only one that had my shit together. Now, you ask me why I talk to you like that, right? It doesn't feel so swell, does it? Now, I want you to look, if you get nothing else out of today, I want you to remember this. I'm getting a lot out of today. I want you to remember this, okay? Yes, sir. You think your mother feels real trapped about right now? Very helpless and hopeless about the situation her son's in? Huh? Yes, sir. Definitely. Now you know how it feels. And it doesn't feel so good. 
See how many of y'all, y'all put people in corners they don't ask to be in? <laughs> and when they act a certain way because you backed them in that corner, how many of y'all don't like the way they act? And you're the one that put them in that situation. Mm -hmm. And then you'll say, but I love my mother. You know how I can sit here and tell you about mothers? I did the same shit to mine for about 30 something years. God bless her. <laughs> All right, some of you guys got to go to the potty. Y'all yeah. got any comments? Questions? Y'all get ready for lunch. Thank you, my